a key player in a nationwide moving scam that defrauded more than 1,000 customers out of nearly $2.5 million. Claims the Fed say cost consumers millions. It was devastating. We had absolutely nothing. They knew exactly what was going on. This was calculated and cruel. Step into the world of Latoya Williams, a woman whose life took a dark turn into the world of gangs and scams. Latoya, once just a regular person, found herself drawn into the dangerous world of the blood gang in New York City. But her story doesn't stop there. She became infamous for pulling off one of the biggest scams the city had ever seen, swindling millions from unsuspecting victims. It was devastating. We had absolutely nothing. They knew exactly what was going on. This was calculated and cruel. From the rough streets to the glitz of ill-gotten gains, in a world where survival means playing by its ruthless rules. LaToya's journey will leave you on the edge of your seat. Join us as we delve deep into her life, uncovering the secrets, the risks, and the consequences of her choices. This isn't just a story of crime. It's a glimpse into a world few dare to explore. Brace yourself for a roller coaster ride through the underbelly of New York City's underworld with LaToya Williams as your guide. Imagine living in a world of glitz and glamour, where luxury apartments in high-end buildings are yours for the taking. Sounds dreamy, right? Well, for LaToya Williams, it was a reality, but not one built on honest means, in a tale that seems straight out of a crime thriller. Her modus operandi? Williams wasn't just any ordinary renter. She was a con artist with a knack for stealing identities, Using fake names and social security numbers, she managed to secure multiple high-end apartments across the city. But here's the twist. She wasn't living in these apartments herself. Instead, she was renting them out. Apartments across Brooklyn served as havens for gang members, with contraband stashed within their walls. One such hideout, linked to the Wood City Street Gang, harbored five firearms a chilling reminder of the dangers lurking behind closed doors. The gang's activities, detailed in a 2019 indictment, painted a grim picture of violence and extortion. Armed robberies targeted homes displaying Indian flags, fueled by the belief that gold and cash awaited inside. Williams, it seems, played an important role, facilitating the gang's operations through her fraudulent rental schemes. The scope of her operation is staggering. At least a dozen individuals fell victim to identity theft, their lives upended by Williams's calculated scheme. But Williams's house of cards began to crumble when a investigation in Queens provided the first glimpse into her illicit activities. The victim, Tyrone Jones, had corresponded with Williams under the guise of Toya Apartments in his phone contacts. Jones' tragic demise ultimately led law enforcement to Williams's doorstep, unveiling the extent of her deception. The unraveling of Williams' scheme didn't stop there. Further investigations revealed a web of deceit stretching across state lines, with Williams renewing leases under, stolen identities in New Jersey, and maintaining multiple Airbnb locations under false pretenses. The lavish lifestyle she enjoyed was fueled by ill-gotten gains, with federal agents uncovering hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash hidden in her home, along with two extravagant watches valued at over $150,000 each. She reported her luxury ride, a 2019 Benelte Bentega, stolen from her parking garage in June, the Fed said. When law enforcement officials raided a Yonkers apartment used by the Wood City Gang in August 2021, they found more clues about her operation, including letters demanding one of the ID fraud victims pay her late rent. An investigation found that person and name of a second victim on the leases of several other apartments, including two places in Brooklyn. A Brooklyn management company kept a photo of Williams, when she viewed an apartment under one of the victim's names in October 2020, and last November, the FBI surveilled her as she renewed the lease of a Bayon NJ apartment under the other victim's name, according to the complaint. But the consequences of her actions weren't just financial. 
the victims whose identity she stole found themselves in legal trouble, facing lawsuits and debt collectors for unpaid rent they never knew about. Despite the gravity of her crimes, Williams attempted to downplay her flight risk, citing familial ties and professional obligations. However, Assistant U.S. Attorney emphasized the significant risk posed by Williams' access to cash, fake IDs, and gang members willing to help her. In a dramatic courtroom scene, Williams' fate hung in the balance as arguments were made for and against her release. What you see is a significant risk that she could use these identities, use this cash and hide out, said the attorney. On the other hand, her lawyer pointed out that she takes care of her 13-year-old niece, has close ties to her sister, and works as a real estate agent, a manager of three Airbnb locations, and does hairstyling work. She has every reason to stay here, he said. Ultimately, magistrate judge granted her conditional release on a $250,000 bond under the watchful eye of pre-trial services division to monitor all her emails and cell phones as a condition of her release. Her sister was also named her third-party custodian, meaning that she could go to jail for criminal contempt if Williams violates the terms of her freedom. I mean, this is a head-scratcher. But one question lingers. How could one person orchestrate such chaos? Well, she was not alone. She had help from other members of her gang, the Mac Baller Brims. Ever heard of them? They are the new mafia, a ruthless Bronx-based cabal of drug dealers and gun runners that some officials call the most dangerous gang in the city. The Mac Baller Brims, a set of the National Bloods gang, form a terrifying band of crime-happy hoods who own much of New York's street drug trade and dominate Rikers Island, where they control the contraband and decide who lives and dies, police and jail sources say. Top dogs in the city, said one law enforcement source. There are more of them than any other bloods, and they're highly organized, extremely violent, and very powerful. Other gangs fear them. Yep, you heard right. The gang, which also calls itself the Mac Bala family, is based in the Morrisania section of the Bronx, but has tentacles across the city, especially in Brooklyn and Staten Island, as well as upstate and New Jersey. Its violence has claimed at least five innocent bystanders, three of them teenage girls, authorities say. The leader is convicted Larry O. Calderon, 37, a Bronx-born career criminal who spent 17 years in state prison in two stints and is now facing life for unaliving a subordinate, according to a top investigator familiar with the gang. Calderon is known as the Godfather, or Don, of the Mac Baller brim, with his deputy being Eli Blood Eli Rios. Calderon and his top associate, Eli Blood Eli Rios, 38, who is currently doing life upstate for homicide, oversee an extensive network in the state and city jails. They effectively head of a mafia-like commission that dictates all family matters, including the sanctioning of hits on rivals and turncoats, investigators said. The decisions of this board of directors, conveyed with the help of girlfriends and family through cryptic messages on Facebook and Twitter, affect what happens on the street and behind bars, the source said. When it comes to initiation rights, it ranges from being jumped in. The proposed member must endure a group beating to committing <laughs> not all survive. Shalever Douse, 14, was told last year he needed to carry out a hit to be accepted. He missed his target, then was unalived. I mean, the gang features a money unit and an unaliving unit. The money unit rakes in millions from dealing H-substance, crack, pot, and prescription pills like OxyContin. Members trade extensively in illegal handguns brought to New York through the iron pipeline and earn cash from home robberies, street muggings, extortion, S-work, and K-napping. That doesn't include their control of a bustling underground market of contraband at Rikers, where a single loose cigarette, known as a finger, can fetch $10 and vulnerable inmates pay protection money to avoid being stabbed or beaten. Assault in the big house also pays well. The MBBs supply hospital-grade scalpels for $100 a piece, 
tiny, razor-sharp weapons favored by inmates for slashing enemies. According to a source, some of these guys have a lot of money. There are reportedly Mac Ballers who have properties, businesses, real estate companies, and houses in New Jersey. Evidently, they're not stupid. One alleged supplier was gang associate Michael Lucky Walcott, an employee at St. Luke's Hospital, who took used scalpels straight from the surgical discard bins and had women smuggle them into jail by hiding them in body cavities, a source said. The gang is also heavily involved in the rap industry, law enforcement sources say. To support that claim, there is a young artist that calls himself Bala Mac, though it's unclear if he's a member of the gang. Like Italian gangsters, the MBBs have their own language and customs, which date to 1969 in California and a group once called the L.A. Hat Gang. Their name changed in the 1970s to the Five Nine Brims, their home turf being at 59th Street in South L.A.'s Harvard Park, as the Bloods grew and unified out west before an East Coast branch was created in 1993. That occurred when jailed leader Omar Porte established the United Blood Nation in Rikers to battle the more powerful Latin kings. Known as OG Mac, for original gangster, Porte set up 10 sets of bloods across the city. One was named the 59 Brims after its LA counterpart, though it operated independently. Formed back in 2001, the Mac Baller Brims are one of the most influential sets within the New York Blood Brim Army. Their name, a blend of homage to Mac Porte and street slang for a big-time hustler, reflects their reputation as serious players in the city's underworld. But it's not all about flashy names and street cred. The Mac Baller Brims operate under a strict code of conduct akin to the Mafia's code of silence, known as Omerta. This means they stick together through thick and thin, no matter the consequences. However, loyalty sometimes comes at a deadly price. It's a grim reminder of the consequences of breaking the rules in their world. There's the tale of Frank Russell, who abandoned his fellow gang member during a botched robbery, ultimately leading to tragedy. When Calderon and Rios sought revenge, the streets ran red with blood. Speaking of Rios, He's no stranger to violence himself, already serving a life sentence for a brutal <laughs> His story serves as a chilling reminder of the Mac Baller Brim's capacity for mayhem. Recently, the gang found themselves in the crosshairs of law enforcement yet again. A massive indictment detailed a litany of crimes, including homicides and attempted mis. It reads like a script from a crime drama, with wiretapped conversations revealing the inner workings of the gang. But even with law enforcement breathing down their necks, the Mac Ballers aren't slowing down. They're adapting, getting smarter about how they operate. Disposable cell phones and coded conversations are just the beginning. They know the game, and they play it well. Despite the crackdowns, experts believe the Mac Baller brims won't be going away anytime soon. The allure of power and prestige continues to attract new recruits, even as the old guard faces the consequences of their actions. In fact, the influx of young bloods eager to join their ranks shows no signs of slowing down. It's a sobering reality that even seasoned members like Rios find hard to ignore. But what does the future hold for the Mac Baller Brims? Will they continue to reign supreme? Or will their empire come crashing down? Only time will tell. One thing's for sure. As long as there are streets to rule and power to be had, the Mac Ballers will be there, ready to fight for their place at the top. And so the saga of Latoya Williams serves as a cautionary tale. As she faces the consequences of her actions, her story serves as a cautionary tale, a reminder that behind every facade of luxury lies a darker truth. It's kinda a stark reminder that crime doesn't pay and that the allure of easy money often leads down a path of ruin. Let William's downfall serve as a warning to others tempted by the promise of wealth obtained through deceit. For in the end, honesty and integrity will always triumph over deception and fraud. And that's all for today. Until next time, bye.